From drawing tablets and computers to crustaceans that hold your pen, digital art can be really expensive to get into. But the good news is that you don't have to pay anything to get some of the best digital art software. In this review, we'll take a look at some of the options available to you. For this review, I don't want to waste any time on poor quality apps. If I wouldn't use it myself or even recommend it, it's not on this list. So here are my criteria. The apps in this review must be entirely free. No paid upgrades for the full set of features. That excluded Artweaver and similar free versions of paid art apps. They must be a proper art app with support for a drawing tablet and pressure sensitivity. That means no Microsoft Paint. Even if the apps have drawing tools, they must be dedicated to art. I'm not counting Blender or GIMP because they are 3D and image manipulation apps, respectively. These apps must still be in active development. No abandoned or neglected projects like Autodesk Sketchbook or Microsoft Fresh Paint. And these apps must be reliable and capable enough for professional illustration work. After narrowing down the results, that didn't leave too many candidates for this review. Honestly, most of the free options are pretty bad. For reference, let's take a look at a few honorable mentions. Here's an example of an app that didn't make it onto this list because you have to pay to unlock the full set of features. I'm talking about Medibang Paint Pro. Although this is a very basic art application, relative to the other art apps I excluded from this review, it's not too shabby. Medibang Paint Pro originated in 2014, but it looks even more dated than that. This is the kind of feature set you'd expect to see in the early 2000s. It's reminiscent of Paint Tool Sci, and like Paint Tool Sci, Medibang hasn't evolved much given how long it has been around and how well established it is. Sure, its basic brushes and tools are not sophisticated enough for advanced digital painting, but for line art, comics, and manga, it's worth trying. If you're only making simple drawings, and I mean with simple tools, not simple in terms of skill or talent, then Medibang could be more than enough for your needs. The main advantage to working with Medibang is its simplicity. The lack of advanced features means you can focus on the basic drawing tools without as much clutter. You can also use Medibang on Windows, Android, iOS, and Mac. It is one of the most cross-platform compatible free art apps on the market. But is Medibang one of the best free art apps? Would I even recommend it? No and no. So why do I bother showing this app? To give you a sense of what a terrible art app looks like, so you can appreciate the good software I will show you later in this review. Let's preview one more art app that doesn't make the cut, but comes close. This is MyPaint, a free open source art application for Windows. Because this is a review, I'd love to have had several apps that are in contention with each other, so I can make fair comparisons. But I couldn't find anything comparable. I thought I could count on MyPaint for this review, but it let me down. MyPaint is intriguing, but I had a really difficult time getting into it because my brush cursor was always very offset. I didn't see a way to fix it, and the online resources were of no help. Sure, I can still use the mouse or my finger, but what good is saving money with free art software if your expensive tablet doesn't even work with it? I also was unable to quit the application, so I had to go into Task Manager to force close it. There, I saw only a process called Python, which means this app doesn't even have its own process in the task manager. Honestly, it just felt so crappy and underdeveloped that I was turned off instantly, despite the things that initially intrigued me. Sure, it offers more natural looking brushes than Medibang, but at least I can use Medibang. I'll have to give my paint the benefit of the doubt that some tablets do work, and that's the only reason why I even featured it in this review. I think it's worth a try if it works with your tablet, but it doesn't feel very reliable, so I would not trust it for professional work. So let's not waste any more time and get right to the one and only top free digital art app, Krita. Krita is a free open source art application that debuted in 2005. It has since become not only the best free digital art application, but it is one of the best art applications, period. It's so good that I can't even find a reason why you would choose any of the other free options. There really is no competition. Not only can you draw and create simple line art in Krita, you can also create advanced digital paintings, animate, manipulate images, draw in vector format, and more. And best of all, it's 100% free. You can donate to support the project, but Krita is not going to require you to pay to unlock anything. 
it's really free. But that's not all. Krita is also very forward-thinking in how they approach digital art tools. They have introduced many innovative tools that are way ahead of what many of the more established art apps are offering, such as advanced color selection, color gamut masking, and more. Krita is compatible with Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android OS. The Android version is a clone of the desktop version, so Krita is also the best mobile art app I've tried. The UI is too dense to fit on a phone screen, so Krita works best with a larger tablet with pen input. Or you can connect the Wacom One display tablet, which is compatible with select Android devices like the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. This will allow you to use your phone like a miniature computer and run Krita full screen on your tablet. Going back to the desktop version of Krita, support for drawing tablets is very good. Krita supports pen pressure, tilt, and rotation. Rotation is only supported by a few art apps. Rotation allows you to use the Wacom Art Pen to change the rotation of your brush dab, which can be incredibly useful for painting. If not, then why are there so many flat traditional brushes? Krita also has a very robust library of learning resources and a community of artists who create content like brushes and tutorials. You can search for Krita on YouTube and find loads of tutorials. I've even created some of my own you can watch. The most negative thing I can say about Krita is that it feels a little cluttered and difficult to navigate. Like Photoshop and many paid art apps, Krita is perhaps trying to do too much. This is really going to turn off a lot of first-time digital artists, especially those who come from a traditional art background. But if you want the absolute best free art app, it's worth learning how to use Krita. I would recommend customizing your workspace so that you can hide anything that is not useful to your workflow. That will really simplify the interface. There are even layout presets you can start with. If Krita doesn't work for you, and you want something better than the other apps I mentioned in this review, but simpler or more traditional art focused, I have a review of the top paid art apps. Check that out if you want to learn more. Let's wrap up this review with some quick comparisons. Compared to Medibang, Krita is going to feel way more complicated, but much more capable. You may be able to do everything in Krita, but with Medibang, you may find that you need another app to finish your project because certain features are missing. And compared to MyPaint, Krita has a more complex interface, but it also has more resources and help guides that are easier to understand. Whereas MyPaint feels more technical in regards to help and offers fewer resources. And interestingly enough, as of version 5 of Krita, MyPaint brushes are supported in Krita. So why you would choose MyPaint over Krita, I will never understand. Essentially, Krita can do most of what Medibang, MyPaint, and many of the other free art apps do. Plus, the Krita team consistently releases new versions with valuable and often innovative features, whereas Medibang and MyPaint are still stuck decades in the past. So just go with Krita if purchasing a paid art app is out of the question. I thought as a bonus it would be helpful for you to know where I rank Krita compared to the paid art apps I've reviewed. Without getting into a technical analysis of its features, Subjectively, I'd rank Krita as my third favorite art app, just under Corel Painter and Rebel. Unlike many of the paid art apps I've tried, I wouldn't be as unhappy being stuck with Krita. It's actually not too bad to work in, even as a professional. In fact, in many ways, Krita offers more professional tools for artists, animators, and designers than even the so-called industry standard Photoshop. You newer digital artists don't know how lucky you are. Krita is amazing, and it's free. Get it! There he goes again, chilling for Krita. Just admit that they're paying you already. All jokes aside, donate to Krita if you enjoy their software. It benefits you as a user to support the developers. Very few things in life are actually free, and if you want there to be such a thing as free art software, those who can need to step up to support it. Think of it as supporting your fellow artists who cannot afford software. This is why the negative sentiment around paying for software doesn't make sense. You can either pay for software through regular updates, or you can donate to support a free project, but it's all the same. Even so, there are plenty of paid art apps that are slow to develop or have even been abandoned because the demand for their app just isn't there. Whereas Krita has been active since 2005 and is increasingly exceeding what even the most established art software can do. Aside from the talent of the developers, it's financial support from artists who use Krita that make it such a good art app. I know this whole review just sounds like it was built around Krita. I went into this video with the intention of comparing more apps, 
But as I looked at each app, I realized that I couldn't help the fact that Krita would overshadow the competition. There are loads of free art apps out there, but you have to draw the line somewhere, no pun intended. I could arbitrarily choose a nice number like 6, but then I'd be artificially making this video longer, rather than actually helping you get set up with an app that is worth using. I'd rather save your time than waste your time, so it is what it is. I have an older review which features some additional free art apps if you're interested in a more robust comparison. I want to conclude this video with a tip for beginner digital artists. Don't focus on the cost of the software. Instead, spend some time trying the free trials of the paid art apps and choose the one that feels right to you whether it's free or not. If it's not free, find a way to purchase the app that feels best to you. A lot of the time you can find an older version of art software for less than the current version. Whether you have the newest features doesn't matter so long as the overall feel of the application is comfortable and it has everything you need. Your software is an important tool. Don't let software that is difficult or frustrating to use hold you back, and don't let it become a reason to give up on digital art. Early in my digital art career, I tried a lot of different art apps, but eventually settled on Corel Painter. Sure, it's on the expensive side, but I've also determined that it's the best for my needs. I own Photoshop, and I can't stand painting in it. Rebel is really cool, but I feel like I'm struggling to paint with that too. Corel Painter is what feels right to me, and that's not just because I have more experience with it. I actually started using Photoshop long before I ever discovered Painter. So I hope you'll put the same amount of thought into the software you choose. You'll thank me for it later. That's all for this video. If you're interested in more reviews of digital art apps and drawing tablets, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.